Dr. Deming has been gone for over a generation now, and some of his teachings have lost context. Uh, the times have changed, and some of his past anecdotes uh, don't always apply. Uh, take the failure of management, and specifically the quote around why did the bank close? Uh, sluggish teller windows, mistakes in bank statements, mistakes in calculation of interest on loans? Uh, no. Uh, what is responsible are bad loans, and that it was the failure of management. The difference between uh, when Dr. Deming wrote this and now is that we have a very dynamic business environment, and it's changed. Uh, government has become oversized and intrusive. Uh, this video will take a look back at the great financial crisis. And, and I specifically took this point in time because this is kind of, from my perspective, the beginning of a lot of the problems uh, that we have seen. The great financial crisis was bad. And I believe that we're going to be something, seeing something much worse because we didn't learn any lessons uh, from the first time around and actually have made it worse. And maybe in Dr. Deming's uh, terms that we've been tampering with our economy. But uh, it displays to me a point in time where government overstepped its charge. Um, Dr. Deming's quote around bad ma management leading to bad loans has been overtaken by something far more damaging. And it's a government with an agenda. Uh, and these government agendas that I'm going to be talking about seem harmless. And an attempt to do the right thing in many people's eyes, but created one catastrophe, the great financial crisis, and we're in the process of creating a second one. And so some of the lessons haven't been learned. And so I'm going to be doing a series of videos, not just about the great financial crisis, I promise, um, but uh, also on what's happened since 1992 and what happened in 1992, all, all the way up to present day and uh, how the environment has changed since doctors, Dr. Deming's death in 1993. If you have an interest in these types of videos, then I would ask that you subscribe uh, to the channel so that you get a notification of uh, future videos about uh, what's been happening uh, the generation since Dr. Deming uh, passed. Um, but let's take a look at these bad loans that happened during the great financial crisis. Um, the movie, The Big Short, would have you believe that the bad loans uh, were caused by greed and uh, lack of regulation. Uh, but it's missing the broader systems that created the ability for the banks to give bad loans to, to the public. And, uh, you know, the government version of these things is <laughs> you have kind of two versions, actually. Um, there was an, an inquiry done uh, after the great financial crisis and uh, was written up. And interestingly, you'll find in uh, the document, I put all the documents uh, below that I used uh, for research. Well, not all of them, but the primary ones um, that walk you through. Basically, there was kind of the Democrat side of things, and then there was a dissenting view uh, written at, by the time at the time by the Republicans. And uh, you know, you will have to make your own decision uh, regarding whether you believe um, what the, the Democrats wrote or versus what the Republicans in their dissenting view had. But I'm going to offer up some other supporting evidence uh, during the course of this particular video. Um, and, you know, the government's version was that low interest rates, uh, easy and available credit, uh, the lack of regulation, uh, toxic mortgages and bundling of mortgages were the primary factors. And, you know, the, the thing that, that you'll notice in the financial crisis inquiry report that was written after the, the great financial crisis is 
uh, a lot of missing detail uh, associated with it, which is what I believe led to the dissenting view uh, of that that you'll read at the very end of that particular document. It is rather lengthy, so uh, but if you're interested in that type of thing, like I said, I'll put a link to it uh, below in the description. Uh, the gov uh, basically, what I read as I read it is it is the primary portion or the official version, if you will, of this financial crisis inquiry report gives the government a pass. Um, it kind of ignored the uh, Community Reinvestment Act. Uh, you know, the dissenting statement itself uh, said that the uh, approach to looking back at the great financial crisis was that only, you know, they only sought facts uh, supporting the assumptions that it already had. And uh, one of the reasons you know, you can speculate for this is that both the Clinton and Bush administ administration pushed for increased ownership of uh, home ownership uh, during their ten years in government, um, and the banks were then forced to compete against the government, at, because the what are called GSEs, the government um, sponsored. Uh, enterprises like Freddie May or Fred, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, where their charge was primarily to um, look at, you know, how can we increase uh, ownership, home ownership in the United States. Now, as a Deming student, I understand the problems with targets. Uh, we all, as a community, the Deming community understands that when you set a target out there, people are going to do what they can to hit it. Uh, and sometimes the actions that they take uh, may be counter to the system in which they're working in. And we've seen this over the years and in many different cir circumstances where maybe a target was unattainable. And so you kind of have to cut corners in order to be able to hit it. Um, and, you know, Dr. Deming's focus was on method. But let's go back to 1992 and Congress assigned the task of increased home home ownership, uh, the rate of it to uh, increase to low and middle income Americans, and they put a target out there of thirty percent. Now, as time went by from nineteen ninety two to two thousand up to two thousand and six, that target was raised to fifty six percent, and the only way to achieve these targets, well. <laughs> was to lower the lending standards, uh, reducing or eliminating the 20% down payment that had become standard, or that uh, it was that the uh, home uh, mortgage was 36% of the m monthly I income. And, uh, you know, we know, we know, and I'll put up a graph of, of relatively recent um, percentages that the lower the let the down payment that you have on a home, uh, the greater the chance of default. And the government loans were five times as toxic as conventional loans that would use uh, the underwriting standards that had been used over the years. And so we had this an unintended consequence of the GSEs uh, trying to hit a target, the Freddie, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, and uh, trying to, comp and they were competing against the ba banks, and so the banks began to compromise their standards. Now, I don't know, I don't believe that the government's charge should be to be in the loan business, but uh, I worked as a consultant in the student loan industry, and I saw kind of the same thing happening. Uh, the government trying to get involved in things that, uh, one, I don't believe is in the Constitution, but two, things that uh, they're not very good at. And so mistakes get made, and especially when you have uh, GSEs being backed up by the government's money, uh, it, gets, it gets a little wonky with regards to how the banks would compete in that particular environment. So I think it's important to this story 
uh, to understand how the great financial crisis unfolded. And you kind of first have to understand that at the time, there were a lot of unconventional mortgages. There were things called ARMS, uh, adjustable, adjustable rate mortgages. There were balloon mortgages. And, uh, you know, you make a balloon payment after a period of time, uh, after a low interest rate. And these unconventional loans became the fuel uh, to rising home and uh, condo prices or townhomes or whatever, because they had such low payments that you needed in order to uh, purchase uh, a home that it became kind of a no brainer for people to sit there and say, yeah, 1% or 2% or 5% at the time. Uh, what a great deal that that'll uh, make things better for me. And so the unconventional mortgage holders uh, needed prices uh, to keep to keep rising. So if I owned a home, their expectation was at the time that because interest rates were low and we, and we had all this fuel that was going on, that uh, prices would rise and then people could flip the homes, right? They could fix them up a little bit, get a low interest loan, flip it to somebody else. Or some people would borrow uh, against the home equity in the increase of the price of their home over time. Uh, but the problem was is that nothing goes on forever. And uh, when things turned down, uh, the high risk mortgages were exposed and people that then couldn't afford them uh, at higher interest rates. And so the what fueled the initial rise in home and condo and uh, townhome prices also worked the other way as they couldn't uh, make the payments. So the holders of the mortgages themselves then had reduced cash flow because people couldn't pay uh, their mortgages. And then the, the, the firms that were bundled, uh, that had bundled mortgages or uh, more, more, what are called mortgage-backed securities, um, the good uh, you know mortgages were bundled with the bad and they were together but they weren't all equal. <laughs> Some had been got, had gone through guidelines of uh, you know twenty percent down payments and you know thirty six percent of their monthly income, and others had not. Uh, and so people were left holding the bag. They didn't know what was in these mortgage backed securities. Now, after a lot of research, I came across uh, someone by the name of Dr. Lawrence H. White. And Dr. White, really uh, an expert, he's an author, he's a um, uh, professor at George Mason University, and he identified uh, two things uh, that really fueled all of this happening. And the first being, uh, they were misguided policies, basically. Um, and, and the first was the Federal Reserve and credit expansion, and the second were mandates and sub subsidies uh, to write mis uh, riskier mortgages. And if you look at what the Federal Reserve was involved with, it was, uh, you know, Greenspan was aggressively expanding the money supply at the time, uh, and they also had uh, sh short-term interest rates were extremely low, and that made these arms, these adjustable rate mortgages, were less in cost than a 30-year mortgage. So people would select the arm or even the balloon type of, of uh, for mortgage in order to have the lower interest rate. And then uh, they would choose that because it was cheaper over a 30-year mortgage. And so those are, are the, the first being the Federal Reserve and the second being the mandates and subsidies to write a mis riskier mortgage. And uh, Dr. White uh, identified uh, four ways. And again, I'll put the uh, uh, article. It's called Housing Finance in the 2008 Financial Crisis. And he wrote it on August 1st, 2009. Really good article. Um, and, you know, 
he identified four ways that Congress and the executive branch contributed to those, these risky mortgages. Um, the first was a, a loosening of down payments by the Federal uh, Housing uh, Administration, uh, which is now part of HUD. Uh, a second was strengthening of a CRA, the Community Reinvestment Act. And, and this is, is really a kind of an interesting one. When it was first be became law in 1977, it didn't really have a lot to it. But as time went by, what happened was is the uh, CRA uh, put pressure on banks to lend to uh, neighborhoods that also ha had deposits with their bank. And, um, you know, they, uh, there was a lot of pressure put on uh, these banks in order to loan because of the, the, these uh, CRA ratings were made public. And uh, there were, interestingly, in his article, he talks about uh, ACORN, which is Association for Community Organizers for Reform Now, uh, the CRA, CRA ratings were influenced by ACORN. They pressured the banks um, with the threat of basically legal ac action, and that started in 1993. And so, uh, you know, they were accusing basically the banks of declining, declining a higher percentage of minorities than whites. And uh, so then what happened was the banks re relaxed their uh, standards for uh, down payment and for income uh, requirements. So that was the second thing. The third thing that happened was the pressure on uh, lenders uh, from HUD. And uh, the fourth thing was uh, subsidizing uh, implicit guarantees by the government to these GSEs, uh, uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. And so you had the situation here where Congress and the executive branch were influencing what was happening, uh, you know, with regards to what should have been a free market um, and uh, putting all of these regulations <clears throat> excuse me, and pressure to uh, the banks uh, help create this atmosphere of relaxed standards of down payments and income requirements. So that's kind of the background that you get of how this whole GFC uh, thing unfolded. So to kind of end this story, Dr. Deming identified the failure of management for bad loans. But hopefully I've been able to demonstrate during the course of this video that what he didn't see was the future uh, and the failure of bad government. Uh, his death in 1993 assured that. Uh, the government played a role in the great financial uh, crisis. Uh, they set targets. Um, they did a shoddy investigation on what had happened. And, uh, you know, these are, are at the core misguided attempts to fix uh, social issues uh, that we have. And if you think that it happened in 1992, look at where we are today. Uh, we have a bigger problem. Um, the government has evolved itself more and more into things best left to the marketplace uh, and the private sector. And, uh, you know, it leaves us in a really bad spot um, in accordance with, you know, what our aims are uh, as a country and what, what we're doing. And uh, I think you just cannot ignore, uh, as a Deming student, what's happening around us and what effect a corporation actually has on its own uh, survivability today. Uh, there is too much government involvement uh, in today's world. So where are we today? Well, Fannie and Freddie survived, of course. 
uh, and they are still around. And recently, and I'm going to say recently, at the end of November, their article came out and said that they will be uh, backing uh, million dollar plus loans, uh, you know, in the envi- in the environment that we have. Now they aren't making the loans, but they're backing the loans of a million dollars plus. So this puts the government that's already thirty one trillion dollars in debt in a spot where, you know, how are they going to be able to uh, basically guarantee loans? And what does that do to underwriting standards uh, that already were a cause of the great financial crisis? Um, Bank of America is piloting a program right now to fill racial gaps in home ownership. 30%, uh, there's a gap of 30% between whites and blacks in home ownership. And so now this is a, a huge issue. So do we go back to getting, uh, you know, reducing the standards by which we uh, have loans uh, given to people? Now, ironically, when I was uh, looking at uh, this Bank of America program, it was Stephanie Kelton that runs apparently a podcast. Now, Stephanie Kelton is someone, and I don't want to get off too much in a tangent here, is someone who believes in modern monetary theory, which is, hey, forget the debt. We can print as much money as we want. And that may be a future video that I'll do uh, through the dumbing lens. But, um, you know, it's just free money. You know, it just grows on trees. And so this is where I believe Dr. Deming was right. You know, he was uh, an advocate of what we need to do is have education so that we're getting the right skill sets that we need to have people be able to uh, get jobs. I don't think lowering the standards or saying math is racist is the answer. Uh, You have to educate people in order to uh, produce things. And, you know, that's kind of the second thing of Dr. Deming's a message is making quality products through a, through a pursuit of excellence uh, in the products that you have. And now we have uh, corporations involved in, uh, you know, ESG and other things that, that get their focus off of what they need to be uh, aimed at. Uh, and innovation. And, and these three pillars, I believe, are the ones that Dr. Deming would have advocated and uh, would have said, here's what, what we need to do. Lowering the standards for other things in order to give people something that they should have the education, the uh, companies that can produce things, and the innovation that we need in this country is the direction that we need to head. And uh, there, I think Dr. Deming was right. But I think, uh, to be honest with you, I think he'd be shaking his head right now at some of the things that are happening uh, with regards to uh, the involvement of our government and also um, how uh, corporations and, uh, you know, the executive branch, Congress and everything else basically colluding uh, together. And again, these will be uh, future videos that I have. So remember, there is always a better way. Let's find it.